Now, last night, I received a very interesting telephone call from one of my most reliable informants. And this person is an older Kenyan, also very experienced in Kenyan politics. Yeah, they have been reading politics for a very long time, almost as long as I have been. And they brought out something that I've been hinting at here on this channel very clearly. Indeed, they made me look like I'm hesitating to say it as it is. Yeah, because he laid it bare. And on my show today, I want us to focus on that. The long and short of what he said is that William Samoy Ruto and his administration are already cornered, are already Kwisha Maneno. Now, many of us have been saying that Ruto is a student of Moy. However, it appears that he missed some very important key lessons as a student to Moy and his way of running a country and keeping things running and keeping his opponents in check and moving forward and doing what he wanted to do. And we'll look at a few very distinct, clear examples. To run a government, you need experienced hands. You can't get around that one. There is no substitute available, not even artificial intelligence, yeah, a computer. No, there is no way around it. You need experienced people. Now, what Mo used to do is to include even his enemies, his political enemies in his government, who were experienced in running government. And I remember the time as a young, inexperienced political analyst, it used to puzzle me why some people remain in Moi's government, when everybody knew that those people were not Moi's friends. And Moi would not do this blindly. What he would do is he'd look at regions and find two or three experienced hands in running government in a certain region. And then what he'd do is appoint one of them. And then after a short while, he would do a cabinet reshuffle, drop the one he initially appointed from that region, and replace him with another one from exactly the same region. In short, he would play them against each other, yeah, so that they would never reach a point where they were united against Moy. In sharp contrast, William Ruto's cabinet is made up of only people he can trust, only his cronies, only his psychophants. Do you expect that government to run smoothly? Do you expect those people to give the right kind of advice to keep the nation called Kenya running? Of course not. If you have the likes of Aisha Jumwa, Moses Kuria in your cabinet, what do you really expect? Not only are they not experienced in running government, because running government is not a joke. It's not as easy as people think. Not only do they not have experience in running government, but they also have another huge problem. Their political track record suggests that they talk fast and then think later. Now, you will already know that even in normal life, just being a normal citizen of the country called Kenya, you cannot survive with that kind of attitude. So let us try and imagine the same attitude in the corridors of power as a full cabinet minister. What do you think the result will be? It can only be disaster. Let's look at something else. President Daniel Torre teacher of Moy and William Ruto have one thing in common. Both were known for their tempers, which are the stuff of legend. When Moy lost it, hey, you didn't want to be anywhere near him. It is the same with President Ruto. When he loses it, you want to go under a chair or even deeper. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight. However, there's one distinct difference between the two men. Moy avoided making decisions when in an emotional state. 
Indeed, sometimes the way it came out in the public is that Moi was slow in making some decisions and too quick in making others. But actually, it is not true that Moi was quick. It is only that people thought he was quick for the simple reason that he would make appointments on the roadside. He would have a public meeting at some small village in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in Kenya, <laughs> and then suddenly announce an appointment. For example, the reappointment of Professor George Saitoti as the vice president. After the country had stayed for over a year without a vice president, yeah, was done at a roadside meeting. And therefore the assumption was that Moi had just decided on the spur of the moment to make that appointment. Not true. Actually, Moi had quietly made the decision after careful consideration, but had decided that the place where he was going to announce it was at a roadside meeting. Yeah, impromptu address to the people. President Ruto is completely different in making decisions. A vast majority of his decisions are emotional. For instance, he recently summoned all Kenya Kwanzaa legislators to State House for a meeting. And everybody knew the agenda of that meeting was the Mandamano. Yeah, on the countrywide protests that are threatening to get out of hand. According to impeccable sources where I got this information, those who went for the meeting were expecting that the government already had a plan in place. But what happened? Instead, President Ruto directed all the legislators present, all the politicians present, to go back to their home areas and stop Mandamano in their respective constituencies and areas of representation and areas of influence. And the president did not want to know how they were going to do that. But that was the directive. Now, I don't think I need to mention the long list of things that can go wrong with such a strategy. People have different personalities. Different politicians operate differently. And the only way to stop these mandamanos is by using illegal and constitutional means. Yeah, like using goons to disrupt the protests. There is no other way. You know running a country is not like running a kiosk. It's not. It's something very different. I gave an example a few months ago on this channel. Why I said being president is like a ball juggler juggling about 20 to 30 balls and keeping them in the air at the same time. That's really what a president is. It needs somebody to be very stable in their mind. It needs somebody who is able to divorce and completely separate his emotions from his thinking. If a president cannot be able to do this, then they will fail. For sure. And I believe this is what we're witnessing right before our eyes. We have a classic case study that we are staring at that is right before our eyes. That's really what it is. This very strategy of stopping the protests yeah, that was spoken about at that meeting in State House is exactly the same strategy that has really backfired for the Kenya government already. We know, confirmed information, that there is a prosecutor from the International Criminal Courts at The Hague in Kenya, as we speak, busy collecting evidence against certain government officials and police officers. That one we know. We also know that the United Nations has focused on human rights violations in Kenya. We know that the things which have been done against innocent Kenyans are not things that can stand the test of time. And therefore we can be sure that at some point in the future, those particular crimes are going to be addressed and prosecuted. That one you can be sure of. It doesn't matter that right now those people are untouchable. It doesn't matter that the government which is in place right now will not allow those people to be touched. But you see that government 
will not last forever. Indeed, all indications are that it's not going to last for a long time. And so, my friends, that is the mess we're in Kenya today. Actually, this political analyst was saying, you don't have a government. You have clowns trying to run a government. And that one will always, without fail, end up in disaster. Now, my very latest weekly intelligence briefings, number 111, which has been greatly anticipated, is going to be out in a few hours. Okay, And you can take full advantage of my latest offer. The other offer expired. You can take full advantage of my latest offer for only $7.95, $7.95. You can get a whole year subscription to my weekly intelligence briefings, but also, at the same time, you'll also be able to get my sets of videos on how to prosper in a dead economy. What offer can be better than that? Both of them only for 795 Kenya shillings or $7.95. And again, this offer expires very shortly. Within the next 36 hours, it will be gone. So please rush. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.